Okay, here's a stupid question. Here's a stupid question. I'll give um, a stupid answer, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What's your best concert and your worst concert? Hasn't happened yet. Come that, on. I learned that from a jazz guy. Somebody said, yeah. you know, you've been playing for 75 years. You know, what was your greatest concert? Yeah. Said, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Hadn't happened yet. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> They're all... I, I, who's to judge? I have no idea. You know, sometimes I'll think, whoa it really felt heavy tonight I, right in right, retrospect right. you know like, mm -hmm. and then i get like 500 emails saying this was yeah. the greatest experience of my life so who the fuck knows how would i know i just forget it i sing i go home right. on tv i get up and i sing again that's all but it's not my business you, to worry you must about have a play, that. you must have a playlist right you must come you just do the same thing every time or do you do, you do different different bargains different you know pooches kind of depending on the mood once again there's no plan but right. remember it's a deepening process so you get uh, there will be some basic group of chants that i might be doing more regularly for a while and then another one will come in and one will drop out or you know there's right. yeah you know, or something will just come to mind. I don't really think about it, but like just last night, uh, was it last night? Yeah, last night, Thursday nights, I sing every Thursday night, mm. for two hours or so, and take some questions every Thursday night, seven right. o'clock New York time. So okay. I started singing and, and then I just, some chant popped up in my head so the next that's what i did next i didn't you know i'm just trusting i guess if you have to think about it you would just say i'm just trusting the process i'm not mm. i'm not running i'm not driving the car i'm just letting somebody else drive who knows how to drive and i just i'm just along for the ride like everybody else so you've never like prepared your voice or done well, any kind of actually, yoga I'm, to make sure that you're all limber and ready for it <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, for, yes, definitely. I, and it's, after 10 years of singing with people, uh, my voice was, I was losing my voice. So I, mm, I had to, mm. I had to actually learn how to sing. Mm, mm. I went to an opera singer who taught me how to, how to use my voice in, yeah. a, in a way that wouldn't rip it up. Mm, mm. And it's good to warm up the voice a little bit. And as far as asana practice, you know, that's what I, I do to stay alive. You know, I mean, and pranayama and asana. I look upon that as for the body. I don't really think of it as the way things are. I mean, for me, it's more of a physical well-being mm. practice. You know, I, I don't really think of it so much as uh quote unquote spiritual practice but but my my teacher Siddhi Mahat, who was maharaji's great disciple she told mm. me to do pranayama so i do it every day i don't do it for any special reason you know like to make sure i can i, I do it essentially to stay healthy and i like to keep singing with people as long as possible yeah uh, i'm people sure people would wheel me people around appreciate you know? that don't <laughs> What's your okay? What's your finally? What what's your feeling of spirituality? What what does spirituality mean for you in daily life? It's becoming a good human being, right? You know, and becoming more aware of other people and and what they're going through, and recognizing that it's not all about me. And that my state of mind is not the most important thing in the whole fucking universe. Mm. You know? Because if we don't think about ourselves, then those thoughts don't arise anywhere. We're free. Mm. So that's what a good human being is. Someone who cares about other people and tries to do whatever they can to, to alleviate suffering wherever it is. And we have enough of our own also to work on. So... Um, like I said, the chanting changes the way you live in the world. It changes the way you see yourself and others. It's not just that, okay, this was a very blissful chanting experience. Wow. 
this was really spiritual. No, it's not like that. It gradually, your subjective version of the world, because everything we're looking out, we're looking at a mirror. When you look, when we think, we think we're looking out at the world, but actually we're looking into a mirror and we're seeing our subjective version. You know, I, I think I, my beard's a little long. I better cut my hair. You know, I better put some moisturizer on, you know. <laughs> that, but we're seeing that out there. So as you chant, as you do these practices, spiritual practice, not just chanting, of course, what you see changes because it's less your version and more uh, factual what's really out there, you know, what, what's really happening there. Because then you're not really even seeing, well, anyway, your, your subjective version and your attachment to me and identification with your thoughts and stories about yourself, that gets the glue that holds you to that gets thinned out through practice. So you may get depressed and instead of it lasting for a year, it lasts for two months. It's, it's, it works like that. It works under the radar. It doesn't, you can't, mm. you can't know. Like Ramana Maharshi said, he said, asking, asking the mind to kill the mind or the ego to kill the ego. It's like asking the thief to be the policeman. Yeah, it takes a, there'll be a that. lot of, yeah, yeah. there'll be a yeah, lot yeah. of investigation, <laughs> but no arrest will ever be made. Yeah. 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 So, I, yeah. That was a great quote in your book. Um, it, but, um, <laughs> finally, fine. <laughs> What advice would you give for anyone on the on the on the path, or what advice would you give to a younger self of you know on the path? Right? Is there anything you would say as a parting shot, as it were? Well, I don't know. Uh, if, uh, the advice I'd give to my younger self would be: Would you chill out, man? What the fuck <laughs> is wrong with you? Shut up, relax, <laughs> take it easy. Don't don't obsess so much. You know what? Yeah. You know, for other, you know, I would just say, you know, go for it and don't give up, you know, because, you know, as an older person now, you start to think about leaving the body and what that's going to be like. And, you know, they say the only thing you take with you when you leave the body is your state of mind and the practice you've done. So, when you're younger, you don't live in that reality. You still think mm -hmm. you have lots of time left to do this and that. And it's a very interesting conundrum. So I would say live fully as go after the things you want, get the things you want, but keep your eyes open and recognize mm -hmm. that nothing you get from the outside will ever make you happy for more than a minute. So, uh, try to plant the seeds of what you really want in life. So. <laughs> Big, biggest um, spiritual moment, epiphany, biggest um, a moment in your spiritual path. Can you pick a well, moment? For me, that's really simple. In, in 1995, six months after I started chanting with people, I quit hmm. because I saw that I couldn't do it from the right place and that I was a hungry guy for all kinds of things and I was going to use all this energy that was starting to come to me to feed myself and I saw not only was that not good for me but it wasn't I was going to hurt other people as well and thirdly this is not why I started chanting to devour other beings and devour this energy for my own personal I, I started chanting to find Maharaji's hand again. I had let go of his hand. He had never let go of my hand, but I had let go of his, and I needed to find that. So after six months, I saw what was happening. I saw what was going to happen, and I was horrified that I, I recognized that I, would not, I am not able to do this. So I quit, and I went back to India, and... I started badgering him because he's already been gone 
20 years. So I'm badgering him. I say, this is your problem. I'm singing to people in your name. Fix it or I don't sing. Good night. That's the deal, you know. He tortured me for three months. Not, nothing happened for three months. And then at the end of three months, just before I was having to leave and come back to America, I was in total despair because I was being prevented from doing the one and only thing that I could do to save my ass. I was being prevented from doing it by me. Hmm. So how do you get around that? Everywhere you go, hmm. you are. You can't. That's what I was saying to him. It's your, I can't do this. You have to change this. Uh, it was a terrible, uh, I was really in terrible despair because what if I couldn't chant it? What, what if I, I, I couldn't do this? I was going to be fucked up the rest of my life. <laughs> mm. And there, I, there was no out. There was nothing I could do about it. I was the problem. So on that day, on June 15th, 1995, actually, which is the day of this big celebration at the temple in Kenshi where I live, he changed everything. He changed them. And he, he, he showed me what, what it all is. He, he changed me. He, he, he showed me that it had nothing to do with me, even if I thought it did. And even when I thought it did, it didn't affect the reality of the situation, which was whatever you want to call it. I mean, it, the reality of the situation is that it wasn't my ego doing this. There was some other power actually transmitting when I chant, but it wasn't me. And so even when I thought it was me, it didn't make, it didn't ruin the situation. And that's what freed me. But saying it like that doesn't, I can't, there's no way I can transmit the, the mm. depth of the experience. I mean, it was a life changing experience. Everything in my life before that was one way and everything in my life after that was right. another way. Right. Mm -mm. Yeah, you do. I mean, you do convey it in the book. So people have to read the book to get the experience. All right. All right. Well, I know, I mean, finally, I know you've been into, you were into drugs before, but give me a, a more sanitary guilty pleasure that you still hold on to now. Something that you enjoy everyday life. I like to get a whole box of cookies, <laughs> put, it, put it in a big cup, pour oat milk into it. No, you it, don't. Seriously. Mash it all up and <laughs> eat it watching some serial killer video on television. Yeah, that's it. You're kidding me, aren't you? I we never know. We'll, we'll never, we'll never know whether he is or isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it there. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you for joining me. It's been an okay, absolute pleasure. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thank Take you. Care. Yeah.